What's good, bottom line viewers? Adam here, a.k.a. AC. I know everybody is suffering from football withdrawal because I sure am. But don't worry, here at the Bottom Line View, we will have you covered all offseason long with NFL coverage. Something that always gets lost during Super Bowl week is the announcement of the Pro Football Hall of Fame inductees. The inductees that were announced this year will be running backs LaDainian Tomlinson and Terrell Davis, QB Kurt Warner, defensive end Jason Taylor, safety Kenny Easley, kicker Morton Anderson, and owner, president, and general manager Jerry Jones. Every year, people debate, should that guy really be in? That player got snubbed, yada, yada, yada. So it got me thinking, who are the top 10 players and or coaches who should be in the Hall of Fame? Obviously, there are a ton of players to pick from, so it was difficult to narrow it down to 10, but I did anyway. The main criteria I use, simple, stats. I know there are many people out there that believe Super Bowls should weigh heavily on the decision. I agree that championships are more important, but at the end of the day, the Hall is an individual achievement. So enough with the chit-chat, let's get right into the list. At number 10, quarterback Donovan McNabb. The longtime Philadelphia Eagles QB was monumental in turning around a struggling Eagles franchise as soon as he was drafted in 1999. The six-time Pro Bowler is the Eagles' all-time leader in every major passing stat, and as an Eagles starter, had a record of 92-49-1. During his career for the Eagles, he led his team to eight winning seasons, five NFC East Division titles, four conference championships, and one Super Bowl. I know what you're all thinking, AC, he's never won the big game. Yes, you're correct. He was 1-3 in, in those conference championships and lost his only Super Bowl appearance to the Patriots in 2005. But where he ranks statistically amongst the NFL all-time passing leaders is nothing to scoff at. He ranks 22 all-time in passing yards with 37,276, 29th in passing touchdowns with 234, and ranks 7 all-time in rushing yards by a QB with 3,459. Let's not forget that until T.O. came around in 2004, McNabb never had a receiving threat. James Thrash, Todd Pinkson, Freddie Mitchell, remember them? Probably not, and for good reason. Donnie McNabb might have to wait a while to get into the hall, but should be in the discussion every year until he does. Number 9, cornerback Ty Law, the three-time Super Bowl champ, two-time All-Pro, and five-time Pro Bowler, was a pinnacle piece of the Patriots defense that won three Super Bowls in the early 2000s. Ty Law still to this day is the best cornerback in Patriots history, not only with his play, but as a leader. His claim to fame moment was picking off Kurt Warner and returning it for a touchdown for the first points of Super Bowl 36 en route to the Pats' first championship. He finished his career with 53 interceptions, which ranks him 24th all-time, the same amount of interceptions as Hall of Famer Deion Sanders. He also led the NFL in interceptions in 1998 and 2005. Recently, Law was selected to the NFL's all-decade team of 2000s. I don't think Law will have to wait long to get into the Hall. His resume is as good as any other player not in the Hall. Number 8, wide receiver Heinz Ward. Ward spent all of his 14 NFL seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where he won two Super Bowls, including being named MVP in Super Bowl 35, and was also named to four Pro Bowls. Ward, even though undersized, was one of the toughest receivers in the history of the NFL. He holds every major receiving record for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that is saying a lot with a great like Lynn Swan, not even close to his numbers. Ward finished his career with 1,000 receptions, ranking him 14th all-time, 12,083 receiving yards, ranking him 23rd all-time, and 85 touchdowns, which ranks him 14th. His stats are more than enough to get him a gold jacket very soon. Number seven, my only coach on the list, Mike Holmgren. Holmgren, who started as a QB coach with the San Francisco 49ers, where he won two Super Bowls, and is most known as the head coach of the Green Bay Packers and the Seattle Seahawks. As coach of the Packers, he had a record of 75-37 and 37 and won Super Bowl 31. He then was very successful taking over a struggling Seattle organization. He led them to one Super Bowl but lost to the Steelers. After his run with the Seahawks, he retired but came back to run the Cleveland Browns, but we won't talk about that. 
Holmgren finished his head coaching career with a record of 161 and 111. Good enough for 16th all time in that category and made it to three Super Bowls as head coach, finishing with a 1 and 2 record in the big game. One thing that is overlooked with Holmgren is his impact with three great quarterbacks in Steve Young, Brett Favre, and Matt Hasselback, kind of. Not only that, like his mentor Bill Walsh, Holmgren had an impressive coaching tree with Andy Reid, Steve Mariucci, and John Gruden getting their NFL head start with the coach. I do believe Holmgren will be one of the next coaches to get in the hall. Number six, safety, Brian Dawkins, the X Factor. He did not get in this year, but he will be a lock to get in next year. Dawkins is one of the best safeties to play the game. Strength, speed, toughness, and smarts, he had it all. The former Eagle played 15 seasons in the NFL and was selected to the Pro Bowl nine times and to the All-Pro team four times. Rarely injured. This is an impressive stat. He is ranked 34th all-time in most games started with 224 and finished his career with 895 tackles. No one wanted to face this guy. He could do it all. In 2002, in a game versus Houston Texans, he became the first player in NFL history to record a sack, an interception, a forced fumble, and a touchdown reception on a fake punt in a single game. He was also a huge reason the Eagles made it to the Super Bowl in 2005. He had an INT in the conference championship against the Atlanta Falcons and had a huge hit on Algie Crumpler, which stopped a touchdown. It's only a matter of time before b gets into the hall. Number five, offensive guard Alan Fanica. Fanica, who played 12 seasons in the NFL with the Steelers, Jets, and Arizona, in my opinion, is one of the best offensive linemen in the history of the NFL. He was selected to the Pro Bowl nine times, was an All-Pro six times, and won a Super Bowl with the Steelers. This guy was an absolute beast, and he also was the focal point of the Steelers' run game from 1998 to 2007, and up till he retired, was one of the best in the game. In his 12 years in the NFL, he only missed three games. He, like Ty Law, was named to the All-Decade team for the 2000s. Number four, safety Steve Atwater. Former Bronco safety Steve Atwater has been snubbed time and time again in the last 10 years. He was a ferocious safety that flew around the field recklessly but with control. Up there with Lott and Dawkins, Atwater's hits punish people. Not only that, he could step up and stop the run. His stats don't jump out at you, but what he did for the Broncos for 10 years cannot be diminished. He was the captain of the Broncos defense that won two Super Bowls with John Elway. During his time in the NFL, Atwater made the Pro Bowl eight times and the All-Pro team twice. It's crazy to think that this guy is not in the Hall of Fame already. I recommend going back and watching some film on him, and you will not be disappointed. Number three, receiver Isaac Bruce, one of the key guys for the Rams' greatest show on turf. In my opinion, Rams' Isaac Bruce is one of the most underrated receivers of all time. Some people like Torrey Holt more than Bruce. I am not one of those people, and the stats back it up. During his 15-year NFL career, he ranks fourth all-time in receiving yards with 15,208, 12th all-time in receiving touchdowns with 91, and 13th all-time in receptions with 1,024. He also made the Pro Bowl four times, retired as a Rams all-time leader in catches, receiving yards, and most yards from scrimmage, and also finished with one Super Bowl. Bruce's stats alone will get him into the hall eventually. A reason why I think he might have to wait is because he wasn't a diva. He was a pretty quiet guy and just went about his business. But oh boy, his business was booming. Number two, running back Edrin James. Looking back on those Colts teams, people remember Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison more than James. But James was an unbelievable runner. In seasons, he was healthy. He ran for 1,000 yards seven times, two of them with the Cardinals. He was a pro bowler four times and made the all-pro team once. The best argument for James to be in the hall is where he stacks up against the best running backs of all time. 12th all-time in rushing yards with 12,246 and 19th in rushing touchdowns. Unfortunately, he never won a Super Bowl because he left the Cardinals a season before the Colts won the championship in 2007. All this stuff considered, James should be the next running back selected to the Hall of Fame. 
And number one, best player not in the Hall of Fame. This was too easy. Number 81, get your popcorn ready, Terrell Owens, T.O. I still can't believe that he did not get in this year. The former 49ers, Eagles, Cowboys receiver is one of the greatest of all time next to Jerry Rice. Second all-time in receiving yards, third all-time in reception touchdowns, eighth all-time in receptions, six Pro Bowls, five all-team pro nods. Jerry Rice was the greatest ever, no question. But he was more skill and smarts. But when T.O. came around being that big, that fast, that strong, it changed the game. Some people say his off-field antics might hold him out a bit for the Hall of Fame. Hey, I'm an Eagles fan. I saw at first town how outrageous he could be. But at the end of the day, he was never arrested. Sure, could he have been a little less detrimental to the team? Yeah, but stats don't lie. Highlights don't lie. He is one of the best ever. He also had a ton of heart. None more apparent in the Eagles-Patriots Super Bowl where he played on one leg and still was one of the best players on the field. Hey, and he loved his quarterback. That's my teammate. That's my quarterback. T.O. will be in next year 100%. I can guarantee you that. So guys, that's my top 10 of players that I believe should be in the Hall of Fame that are not already. Just to recap, number one, T.O. Number two, Edron James. Number three, Isaac Bruce. Number four, Steve Atwater. Number five, Alan Fanica. Number six, Brian Dawkins. Number seven, Mike Holmgren. Number eight, Heinz Ward. Number nine, Ty Law. And number 10, quarterback, Donovan McNabb. Do you guys have anyone I missed? What's your top 10? Let us know in the comments below. And just a reminder, stay tuned for our off-season NFL video starting next week with the first bottom line view mock draft. I'm AC. Catch you all later.